This is CBN News Watch. Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Brody Carter. We begin this half hour with fighting intensifying on Israel's northern border. Hezbollah targeted a church in Israel on the day after Christmas. Meanwhile, the U.S. struck Iranian backed forces in Iraq after an attack on a U.S. base. CBN Middle East correspondent John Wagi has more on our top story. Hezbollah is stepping up its attacks on Israel on the northern border, and Israel is striking back. Hezbollah is trying to drag the country of Lebanon and the region into this war that Hamas started. If Hezbollah continues, they will bear the consequences and the responsibility for the outcome. Israel says Hezbollah fired an anti-tank missile at a Greek Orthodox church in northern Israel, wounding two Israeli Christians. When IDF troops arrived to evacuate the wounded, Hezbollah fired at the church again, wounding nine Israeli soldiers. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu outlined conditions for the post-war administration of Gaza in an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal. Yesterday, Prime Minister Netanyahu spelled out the 3D vision for peace between Israel and our neighbors in Gaza, the destruction of Hamas, the demilitarization of Gaza, and the de-radicalization of Palestinian society. Those are the three prerequisites for peace. Meanwhile, the U.S. military carried out retaliatory airstrikes against Iranian-backed militia in Iraq after three U.S. service members were injured in a drone attack. And Iran's defense ministry promised a smart and strong response to an alleged Israeli airstrike that killed one of its top generals in Syria. Now the UN announcing Iran has tripled its production of nearly weapons-grade uranium, a stepping stone to a nuclear bomb. John Wagi, CBN News, Jerusalem. The Hamas attack on Israel was only the first phase of a long-term plan by Iran to wipe out the Jewish state. In fact, it's all part of an Islamic end times prophecy. Iranian leaders believe Israel must be eliminated before the return of a mystical Islamic figure known as Mahdi. Dale, uh, Dale Hurd, that is, has this story. Iran has been indoctrinating its fighters throughout the Middle East in the belief that Israel is the biggest obstacle to the return of the Mahdi and that there must be an apocalyptic war that destroys both Israel and Jews around the world. Islamic expert Raymond Ibrahim. So the Mahdi, as, as an English speaker would pronounce it, it's really Mahdi, which basically means guided. So he's the guided one or an Islamic understanding he's the rightly guided one. And he takes on different guises depending on which sect of Islam you ask, Sunni or Shia. Sunnis, the majority of the world's Muslims, believe the Mahdi has not yet been born. The Prophet said hadith is in Abu Dawood, a man shall come towards the end of times. His name will be my name, and the name of his father will be the name of my father, meaning Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Shia Islam, which is dominated by Iran, teaches that the Mahdi is already alive and has been hiding for over a thousand years. Brother Rashid, a former Muslim, hosts a Christian program for Muslims called Daring Questions. The Shia Muslims, uh, especially the Twelver Shiism, they believe that he is the twelfth Imam and he was born around 868, so he just disappeared. He's still alive until today. His age is 1155, if you want to. So he's still living somewhere. And um, one day he will show himself. Muslims in Iran believe the Mahdi is hiding in this well in the mosque of Jamkaran. Pilgrims peer down the well with flashlights, leave prayer requests for the Mahdi and hope he will reappear. Muslims believe that when the Mahdi returns, he will be accompanied by Jesus, known in Islam as the prophet Isa, to rid the world of evil. Iranian leaders have seized upon belief in the final battle before the Mahdi's return to motivate its military and allies to fight harder to destroy Israel. And a lot of the, you know, Islamic schools or jihadists, are being indoctrinated by by Iranian propaganda in in Mahdism, and again, it always centers around Israel and attacking and destroying Israel. Some believe in the next phase of its plan to wipe out Israel, Iran might initiate a multi-front attack through its heavily armed proxy armies in Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq. 
Ibrahim and Brother Rashid say the doctrine of the Mahdi's return means that any attempts by Israel to make peace with the Muslim world will ultimately prove to be futile. Israel is a threat to Muslims, to the Mahdi, to the coming of the Mahdi Saudi. They, they have to be eliminated. There is no, no other solution. So I don't think Israel could ever have permanent peace unless Islam were to completely change itself and become not Islam, to be something completely different. And Ibrahim worries that Iran might be willing to use a nuclear weapon against Israel to ensure the return of the Mahdi. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Back here at home, a major winter storm is slamming much of the central plains, bringing blizzard-like conditions to residents. At least nine states are under winter weather alerts. They says many are returning home from the holidays. In North Dakota, neighborhoods look more like an ice rink with some breaking out their skates. I-29 from Fargo to the Canadian border closed down. A blizzard warning issued from northeastern Colorado into western South Dakota, while the northeast experiences dense fog and rain. Well, the holiday season is a peak time for the flu and other ailments. Hospitals are seeing an uptick in ER visits and admissions from flu and COVID-19. COVID rates are up for the sixth straight week with a new variant stemming from Omicron listed as a variant of interest. Meanwhile, the Centers for Disease Control reports more than a dozen states, mostly in the South, experiencing high or very high rates of respiratory illness. Here on CBN News, we've got plenty more here on the News Watch. Potent, easier to use, harder to detect, an alarming number of teens vaping THC. It's giving kids a quicker high more than marijuana. We've got those details coming up after this break. Introducing a brand new way to start your morning, the CBN News Quick Start Podcast. Each weekday morning at 7 a.m., get quick highlights of the day's important news, then an in-depth analysis that goes beyond the headlines, insights that matter to people of faith. Discover how God is moving around the world and here at home. Find the CBN News Quick Start Podcast on iTunes or wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts, because truth matters. Welcome back to CBN Newswatch. Addiction, psychotic episodes, thoughts of suicide. That's a fallout from a dangerous trend sweeping through America's schools. More teenagers and younger children are vaping with what's known as THC. That's the key ingredient in marijuana. Medical reporter Lori Johnson brings us the story on this major health threat. The most recent CDC figures available show more than one in five high school seniors vaped THC in 2020, a significant increase over prior years and likely even greater today. Many parents may know THC is the main psychoactive compound in marijuana, but don't realize vaping it is much more potent than smoking a joint. It started whenever I was um, 14 years old. I was about in eighth grade. Vaping THC provides a much quicker high that can be damaging and addictive. It was like one or two hits of the pen and I would instantly be high. Unlike typical marijuana cigarettes that contain 10% THC, these new vaping devices can concentrate it to a staggering 95%. And the higher the dose of THC, for example, the higher the likelihood that you will end up with a psychotic episode. And that will lead you to end up in the emergency room department. The longer that I used it, just the more my mental health started deteriorating, my grades were slipping, I couldn't really think or concentrate as well. In my mind, I was trapped in this delusion of, like I have to commit suicide because my parents are gonna find out. Doctors say today's ultra potent pot can interfere with heart and lung function, plus cause severe vomiting and abdominal pain. All of these are, are, are new presentations that physicians are seeing in the emergency departments associated with consumption of 
high level THC that, that we actually even, didn't even know existed. Vaping THC is often odorless, so it's easy to hide even at school. You know, I could do it in class, I could do it in the bathroom. Since turbocharged THC delivers such a powerful hit to the brain's pleasure center, it can also lead to addiction. The only thing I was thinking about was when's the next time I can use this again, or like when's the next time I can go to the bathroom or the teacher will let me go. A loophole in the 2018 Farm Bill, which legalized hemp, also covered Delta-8 THC vape products, which are synthesized from hemp. That means in addition to cannabis dispensaries, they can be sold at smoke shops, gas stations, and online in nearly every state. Manufacturers literally sweetened the deal by adding kid-friendly flavors like strawberry and bubblegum. I do not understand why the United States of America, why the, our government is not protecting our children. That is their job. The people that want to profit off our children's, off our family's destruction, have a lot of power in our country. Christian parenting expert Kelly Newcomb issues a call to action. Ultimately, God's word says that we are to be sober-minded. We are to be on the lookout for the devil prowls like a roaring lion, waiting for someone to devour. And marijuana is one way to just sort of numb our children's brains. One other way that Satan is using to get kids to walk away from the faith. Newcomb says parents should become familiar with the appearance of vape pens. And if suspicious, search their child's bedroom and backpack for the pens, as well as missing or spliced charging cords, which are used to power the pens. When they are this young, because I've heard of 11-year-olds even using this as they're entering into like fifth, sixth grade, it's really decisive action. You need to act really fast. Newcomb also recommends taking smartphones from kids suspected of using drugs to limit potential access. Because that is how they're accessing all of it through and you could call them dealers, but they're often just friends. They're people at the school who've got older siblings who are buying it but essentially they're dealers. Allow kids to communicate using a kid-safe phone like Pinwheel. Pinwheel allows you to read all of your child's text messages from your own phone through the caregiver portal. And that's really helpful. And you can sort of find out who are the kids who are asking for vape or asking if they want vape. Parents can also use a drug test available at pharmacies as an option. So it's just having that conversation of saying, while I trust you, I, I can't, you know, I, I trust God and I fear God more than I, than I fear, you know, you being mad at me for drug testing because this is really prevalent. Some parents feel testing actually gave their child an excuse to stay sober while also saving face. It was a good preventative measure for him to say to his peers who were pressuring him to use, like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to use because I know I'm going to get drug tested any day. The THC metabolite is actually stored in the fat and it lasts a long time. So it can actually stay in the urine for up to four to six weeks. Some kids choose THC vapes because they do not typically contain fentanyl like other street drugs. Doctors fear that could change. I think we cannot be complacent and we have to be uh, open to the possibility that someone may think about doing this and say, well, if I want to have a unique product for vaping THC, what about I mix it with fentanyl and then sell a product that's going to be incredibly dangerous? Fortunately, Nick got the help he needed to quit vaping THC. Like, I feel so much better off of this. Like, I feel like I can be free and experience life like I should. He urges others to kick the habit or better yet, never start. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Still ahead, we sit down with actor Nick Shakur to talk about his role in the upcoming new season of The Chosen. Stay with us. You're watching CBN News Watch. Stay connected with CBN News all day across our platforms. Welcome back to CBN News Watch. Next year, an all new season of The Chosen will hit big and small screens alike. It's a groundbreaking series on the life of Jesus Christ and those who walked with him. Ephraim Graham sat down with some of the cast, including actor Nick Shakur, who plays the role of Zebedee, a fisherman and father to James and John. 
It's a role he says has brought him closer to God. I'll take the fish to the market and settle up Simon's debt. I'll get some help to fill both of these boats. Are you sure? Yes, go. What will you tell Ima? <laughs> You've just been called by the man we prayed for our entire lives. And you ask me, what will I say when you miss supper? Nick, you play Zebedee. Mm -hmm. This is a weird question, but how does being a Care Bear prepare you for, for playing <laughs> Zebedee? You know what's, you know what's, I, I don't even think it's ironic, more serendipitous, uh, where God started me off as voicing Grumpy Bear. And do you know what his belly badge power is? It's thunder. And it's it's funny in that he, he goes from being thunderous in season one, and he becomes a little bit more tender-hearted as the series progresses so well. So that's how they relate. Nice. <laughs> What's he like now, season four, in your mind? How would you describe him? Now, it's a combination of maintaining his strength that he had in season one, while infusing that with the joy and kind of balancing the both. What do you think about the growth and just overwhelming popularity of this series? Why do you think it's resonated so well? Although the show is, of course, there's there's our artistic liberation taken in it, but I believe it is all inspired. God inspires us to do new things every day. And so I, I genuinely believe, and even when I am on set, the presence of the Holy Spirit is so strong that I believe that's what people are truly resonating with when they watch it. It's, it's spirit infused. And I think that's the key because it's inspired. So that's, that's what people are resonating with, I believe. It's just feels raw and real. That being the case, how do you prepare for this role on a daily basis, weekly basis, seasonally? How do you prepare? I'm so blessed and fortunate that that God has given me the, the raw ability to perform. But then I've taken that and just worked on it over and over and over. And by the time I'm done practicing at home, I show up to set and in a way I let him work through me, whatever, whatever comes out, whether it's way too off kilter or whether it's, you know, too little or too big. And the beauty about that is I'm fortunate to work on a set where there's so much respect and trust from the director that it allows me to be as zany as I want, knowing that he's going to catch me if I fall too far off what, he, what he's envisioning for the show. How has this changed you or impacted you personally? Well, it's it's been amazing. Uh, his strength is something that I've been very drawn to uh, from the start. His strength is something that I've been learning from um, in that you can be strong and uh, and convicted in who you are while balancing the level of care and love and respect that you show to people. So that's one of the biggest things that's that's impacted me as far as playing the character goes. Is Nick the same Nick he was at the start of this job today? No. <laughs> um. Uh, it's it's amazing. This show, I, I've been telling some people, has been a uh, conduit, God's conduit to get me here. And uh, I will share this one thing. Uh, this past September on, on the 19th, I was invited to a church conference where uh, I physically uh, encountered the Holy Spirit for the first time. And it felt like my internal organs burned away. And I started life all over again. And I can feel him all around me now and in me. And uh, it was a very unexpected circumstance that took place. Uh, so definitely, um, it went from, I always had Jesus in my heart. I gr grew up Greek Orthodox Christian, but it, it went from, as they say, you know, resting on you to resting in you. And it's been the biggest trip of my life. <laughs> What's your prayer for this season? I don't really have one. I'm just allowing him to continually guide us and trust that it's going to go where it needs to go because who knew it would reach this point. I mean, we're sitting here with, you know, chosen icons behind us and I'm talking to you and having a good time and never thought in a million years when we were shooting with like a 20 person crew that we'd be sitting here doing interviews about it. Uh, so um, we'll just we'll just watch where where he takes us next.
And please join us tonight for a special edition of Studio 5, where we get a first look at Season 4 of The Chosen and talk more with the cast. Again, you can catch that special tonight on the CBN News Channel at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also watch it on the CBN News app or on YouTube. Well, Pulse Ministry has a new campaign to spread the gospel of Jesus. We'll share more about this campaign right after these messages. Introducing a brand new way to start your morning. Get your daily quick start from CBN News. A quick read on the important news of the day delivered right to your inbox. Stay current on breaking news, politics, and entertainment. Discover how God is moving around the world and here at home. Plus, get exclusive stories and daily scripture encouragement just for you. Stay informed. Go to quickstart.news and subscribe today. The Global Ministry Pulse is launching an evangelism campaign to spread the gospel of Jesus in North Dakota. Pulse founder Nick Hall says his goal is to reach every person in that state with the gospel over the span of two years. 200 young evangels, they will take part in the campaign where Nick Hall talks more about this event, saying, quote, We want to hit every nursing home there, every prison, every juvenile center, every recovery center, and really just sharing the good news of Jesus, and hopefully raising a, a generation to do the same. And you can read more about this evangelism campaign by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Well, a pasta to pooch is a new gourmet restaurant. It's for dogs in Rome, Italy, where the place is owned by a couple of individuals who want to bring their furry friends to get dinners as fancy as their own with dishes to sweet and to soup. Everyone. Now, the restaurant is the first of its kind in Italy, providing gourmet food for dogs of all sizes. Dogs there are provided with a basket and a bowl of water at each table. That water is poured into the bowls once the dogs have settled in. Now, different meats, fish, vegetables, also available on the menus for the pooch. A very cute story to end this edition of CBN News Watch. And remember, you can find more of our news programming on the CBN News Channel anytime or online with CBNNews.com. And we want to talk with you. Tell us the stories that you've liked by sending us an email to newswatch at CBN.com. Talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day.